Smith and Nan Curtis. Dangerfield and Martin. Smith wins it down. Off the boot there of Butler. And we get it forward. Tui, who's had a really impressive year for the Cats. Off hands immediately. Lambert was able to get it deep inside 50. Lining it under real pressure. Can he came it in front on? Townsend there as well. And this is what the Tigers have done so well all year. Their forward half pressure has been magnificent. And they've started on song here today, Bruce. Martin tries the fend off. Did it okay in the end? McIntosh and a stoppage. So such excitement around the ground and already you can feel it amongst the players actually. A frantic start. Yeah, Lonigan, you know, having to suck it hard early and, and get a hard ball and try and get it over the line knowing that there was danger in just that. So Smith and Nankervis so it So the two captains Looks like Cam Guthrie is going to have the job on Dustin Martin at that last stoppage. Guthrie going straight to him. We wondered if it would be Scott Selwood, but Cam Guthrie played on Martin in that game a few weeks back at Simmons Stadium, so he's got the job again. So Duncan Short. Just, do you reckon, Duck there, Geelong deliberately taking a bit of sting out of the game here, knowing that the crowd has heavily weighted Richmond's way? Oh, there's no doubt it's uh, weighted Richmond's way, but as you can see there... It's just frantic, isn't it? You can see the pressure already from the Tigers. Interesting. You'll have to watch that, Selwood. Can't let that happen again. So neutral territory. Every umpire taking a long time to whip it back into play. Smith in front. Cochin with a little mini clearance. Pressed here. Really fast hands. Jesus, the Lambert tap on was a ripper. Torioli, who just took him on by himself. Now he's got to gather the hard part. Duncan did well. In they come. Caddy was brushing them aside. Lonigan's got it all to do. Once again, this Richmond forward line. Look at the pressure. Every time the Cats get it. And they will force the turnover here again. Gee, Lonigan was good there, but they get that turnover with Asprey. Able to send it to Floston now. He's got a... Wall of players in front of him. Revolt couldn't quite get a run at it. Oh, he's done it again, has he? A miracle, man. Townsend gets the opener. Where's this guy come from? Comes from Leighton, Bruce. Thank you. <laughs> it's, in, it's in the Riverina. It is, it is. Your territory. Not too far from uh, Wagga Wagga. We'll claim him now. What a find on the eve of the finals to find a guy <laughs> oh. three or four weeks out capable of doing what he's done. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? He could go home now and he's done his job. Yeah, what a frantic start by the Tigers. Build off pressure again. A little thing early there. Lockie Henderson with the fist. Didn't get it to the front. Unfortunately, let the ball get over the back and... Jacob Townsend, like he's done over the last couple of weeks, just swooped on it. 20 kicks he's had for the Richmond Football Club, and guess what? He's kicked 12 goals. <laughs> what about that for efficiency? Richo, a little bit of light rain. May not be able to hear us down there. Yeah, I can, uh, BT. And Townsend, I reckon his role is to take Henderson out of it. Light drizzly rain falling at the G Mac and toss over the back. Lambert pulled the trigger. Rewalt, little fumble, time to recover. High ball coming back. Missed. Tigers on fire have had it in their forward half for just about the entire minute so far. And it's the pressure, it's the tackling. Getting the free kick there on Zach Tui. The captain Trent Cochin. Yep. It's a great start. Pumping the ball back inside 50. Straight down the middle. Hawkins was the target. They're just going to absorb this Geelong, don't they? I mean, they're feeling it just like we are. Martin crashing and bashing. Can't quite get through. That's what Dangerfield does. And he has to cough it up as well. Game tackling there. Martin tried to bullet his way through, and he does. And then Curvis's little kick didn't go far. Zach Guthrie maybe got into the back. Nothing happening. Rioli tried to toe poke. Townsend can't get through. Buse wraps him up. Okay. Martin a moment ago. He's like a bulldozer, wasn't he? Tell you what, if you're first in at this stoppage, you are a big chance of getting a free kick. See what happens here. 
Smith the knockdown. Motlop did well with the use of the body. Here's Townsend again. Dangerfield takes it away. Penetrating ball looking for Harry Taylor. Too long. Rance got back. Will be paid the mark. Rance would have set himself for this game, beaten by Harry Taylor last time. Would not have liked that at all, Duck. Can he hear? Peeling for the free Macintosh. Little handball. Butler zigging, zagging. A little spinning pirouette. How was that? Left foot kick. Not so good, Lonigan. It's been good, Lonigan, early. Gets to Selwood. Selwood getting involved as well. So Geelong get out to Parfit. Now, where do they go? Parsons was longer. They decided to go shorter than Motlop. And then Motlop's kick is so disappointing. And Prescott cuts it off. Tidies up. And here's the man that does all the running off. Halfback, Alice. And look at the kick to Rewalt. Rewalt wants to wind up. Goes with a low ball. Looking to bring Martin to the footy. He'll turn around. Snap. Couldn't get it to bend enough. Richmond full on attack here at the MCG. All over them at the moment, the Tigers are just causing turnovers. That kick was not on. Three Richmond players would have cut that one off. The counter-attack, Dusty Martin couldn't quite finish, but it's the Richmond pressure and now perceived pressure, which is just causing Geelong to fumble and miss a few targets. They've been asked a big question mark early, haven't they, the Cats? So Tui down the middle, Dangerfield, great mark. What about that? See, that releases some pressure, doesn't it? Looks like they want to do that. They want to come down the middle on the kick-ins. That is so precious, that mark. And Scott Selwood's kick. Well done, Hawkins, actually. And then Parsons' little gift. Murdoch, wrong side for him. He's a lefty. He's a committed lefty, isn't he? Malcolm Turnbull, don't worry, but he is. And once again, Atlas beaten for the footy, but just the pressure that he's able, they're able to put on here at the moment, the Tigers. They're relentless. Prime Minister be here tonight, Bruce, would he? Well, he should be. Yes. <laughs> Everybody else is. Yeah, well, they are. Have a look at them. Look at this. MCG. Barely a seat free. Exactly what Richmond can put into this final system. Playing a Geelong side that we know so much about under this sort of pressure. The interesting thing about Richmond startling is they haven't really scored the way they should have probably. No, Even they haven't ball. with all that dominance. Paddy Dangerfield launching at that mark. He's trying to impose himself on this game, but haven't piled it on. But oh, they, they've been good early. Another great tackle. Oh, Holding he had ball, time. Man. Brilliant tackle. It was indeed. What this does do, BT, is if Richmond can keep pumping it inside their forward 50, it tires the Geelong defenders. So the goals will come if they can keep this intensity up. Graham, it is just in game number three for him. So some real youth in this side. And a free here going to the Ruckman and Smith. Gets it off to Henderson. So Henderson able to run his full measure. Tap the ball on the ground. Kicks to a one-on-one -on -one at full forward. Here is Taylor and Rance. Rance did well. He sort of worked him underneath and then picked up the scraps. And then was a little scrappy himself and tried to bang it away. Castagna got a bad bounce. Tui started okay. Gets it to Mackey. Experience there. Belting back. Harry. Harry nearly. And then the little give. And danger field. And this is... She's lively, though, Dangerfield, and a little wounded right now. Yeah, a little bit of a limp there. May have just been a contact injury. Oh, a bit Ooh. of a bend of the knee, and yeah. the inside medial got a real little bit of a shake then and a twist, didn't it? Parfit just got a hand on that, so it won't be out of bounds on the fall, but that was a nasty position for Dangerfield to be in. Well, if it goes much further than that, that's oh. where you are talking the medial ligament. Oh, I see, you're right. Yeah. That is terrible. Very, very lucky if he's got away with that, Paddy Dangerfield. Looks like he has. The Rance Taylor battle. How good's that going to be? Already been down there a couple of times. Duncan off the boot to puff it. Looking for Selwood. Blitzars with a tackle. And now DeLong's turn to get involved. Yeah, it's been a good response. It's early, we know, but it has been a good response by the Cats. This is where they squeeze you, Geelong. This will be the challenge for Richmond tonight, getting out of these situations and getting through Geelong. See if they can, Richo. Scott Selwood belts it forward. Hawkins used that big frame, and then, disappointingly for him, coughs up a free kick. He'd done the hard work. So let's see if the Tigers can get out. And that one, well, not sure if it was meant for Edwards. If it was, it was a 
touch of Genius Grigg takes a chance here, but McIntosh just got rid of Parsons. That was terrific, and away go the Tigers. And his kick is not so good because it was not to the advantage of Townsend then. He kicked it slightly back inside him, Lingy, didn't he? Yeah, it was a poor kick. Yeah. He did, and as Richo said, Townsend with a job yeah, on Lockie Lockie Henderson, yeah, just no, trying to negate go. his intercept marking, and that doesn't help when you kick it straight to his advantage. Henderson down the line, looking for Murdoch. Little hands, Rance got driven forward in the tackle, so he's probably ahead of Taylor at the moment, is Rance. He's had a good start. And he's prepared to come up the ground, isn't he, Duck? Yep, coming up for his fourth disposal already. And you love the way that he's playing the game. Conservative slides it down the line here on this occasion, though. Tui couldn't reel it in. Handball by Lambert has had plenty of it so far. Little flick back into the Geelong area. Here's Tui. Underground handball, deliberate, didn't have much on. McIntosh trying to duck under the tackle. Successful to the point where he wasn't paid against and he was able to get it to the boundary. The boy from Pinjarra in Western Australia. Dominate, please, Richmond. Toby, Mark, give that meter. So Tigers attacking and leading. Pressed it, just a slight fumble. Oh, my God! It's been good Scott Selwood since he came into the team. Interesting recruit last year. And a couple of injury-riddled seasons, but he's uh, he's worth his weight, I reckon. Good kick, danger field. While this play's been over the other side of the ground and stuck in Geelong's forward line, Koch and Ann Martin both been off four and a half minutes, can't get back on. Yeah, we saw them a moment ago, Richard. I didn't realise it had been quite that long. Rance wants a free, and he's uh, pinged for holding the ball, and now the advantage given and a boundary throw in. And Rance is in a bit of strife here. He played on. Played the free, he played on. Blood rule. Blood rule. He, he caused the headlight tackle by tucking it So we heard the explanation for the umpire. He's not happy, is he? Just telling the trainer to relax a little yeah. bit. We think it hit Harry Taylor's knee accidentally. There you go. And that's exactly the contact. So accidental here. And that's and that's what the umpires and the AFL don't want players to do. And that's why they didn't pay to the free kick. They don't want players ducking in like that because you can really do some serious damage to yourself. And yep. Rance has done exactly that. And he's a good-looking guy. This will damage that slightly. He'll have some staples, a bit of hemorrhoid cream, and he'll be back out there in a flash. Alex Rance, and give Smart a chance. So they have, even though the ball was, as Richo said, on the other side of the ground, it's given them a chance to get him back into the action. And they've got Cochin on as well in that halt in play. Both their stars on. Good effort there. Graham there. Selwood keeping it alive. Scott it was. On this occasion, Hooley and Taylor. Hawkins a little touch on it. Out the back door it comes to Floston. He goes around the corner with a high ball and a sliding mark by Duncan about, around about 60 metres out from the Geelong City end goal. Had a fabulous season, really elevated himself. Kicks to full forward. Taylor was the third man up. Hooley's hands were quick, but pressure on Grimes. Smith trying to get down low. That's hard for him to do. Broad's little kick fortuitously to Edwards. Edwards running, bouncing, trying to create. Did very well, did uh, Titch, but then Castagna had a little bit of a fumble. Ball into the centre. Hartnell high tackled shortly on Buse, not paid. And then Grigg trying to flash it out, doesn't quite. And that ball in dispute. I think we're going to get a stoppage. They're out there, the Tigers. Just a couple of little fumbles. It's not as clean, slippery conditions. Got into a good position of attack here now for the Tigers. Geelong had it locked in there for a few minutes. Smith has to reach over the top here of Nan Curvis. Martin with a little one. Likewise, Duncan Cotton got a little bit more depth on the kick, but Lonigan poised as always. G2, he's had a good year for the Cats. Been a great get for them with a number of their key deep defenders like Corey Enright and Corey retiring in recent years as Scott Selwood has taken the ground by Dusty Martin. And just watching that last stoppage back in the middle of the ground, Scott Selwood got to Dustin Martin. We said right at the start Cam Guthrie was going to him. So perhaps between Guthrie and Scott Selwood, gonna, yep, double team Dusty Martin. So Smith and Curvis, 50-50. There they are together there, Lingy. 
the two of them kicking in danger against Greek. Careful. So Scott Searle was busy early, isn't he? <laughs> and he kicks to half forward, so sort of down that line. So Murdoch the recipient. at the back there on McIntosh. Hawkins gave a fair shove to Grimes as well, but the free kick goes to Murdoch just before the push. Now he's a long kick. This is a tight pocket, though, for a lefty. So does he just set it up? I mean, there are players, every player basically in front of him. 52 metres out. No, no, no. It's a nothing kick, really, isn't it? There's the free again. So Grimes, great scene, Friday night finals action in Melbourne. Kick very close to the boundary line defensively and designed to be that. Edwards supplying plenty at the moment, a little bit of a handball in hope. Motlop is one they've got to be careful of tonight. Lonigan handball out the back two, he stepped forward again. Kick around the body under pressure, straight down the throat of McIntosh. He looks across and... Geelong have shut any chance of a switch and movement through the corridor down very, very swiftly. Good defensive attitude by the Cats. Long ball down the line. Off hands of Rewald. Again, it was. Castagna is there. Tackle on Motlock was a little crude. He's going to take possession. Heard the explanation. And so Motlock runs and then kicks badly again. So... He's had a couple of shanks, hasn't he? He has. First one was a turnover in the centre of the ground, and that one coughed it up. Now, Greek decides to go with a long ball to about 65 metres till he picked it off. BT's talked about just what he's done for the Cats. Just can't allow that, the Richmond forwards. That ball has to come to ground. Cannot allow winner set marks. That's won't the, be happy about that hard work. That's the last three. Four oh, race, four, two, duck. And here he gets it again to it. From Searle and then kicks the half forward. Rant's getting ready to come back and Taylor out there with Grimes at the moment. And Geelong take it from one end to the other. And a couple of leading possession winners for the Cats at the moment. Zach Tui's had seven disposals. Right, Tom Lonningen's had five. Lockie right, Henderson's right, been able to get Toby's it. Exactly right. what you're talking about, Duck. Just intercept Let's marks talk. and it kick starts so Toby, much Toby. of Geelong's game. Up. And it leads to that. Eight of the last ten have gone inside the Cats 50. Hawkins. Deft little tap, quick little boot out of the pack there, so quick. Didn't even see who it was, Bruce, it was Parsons. In the end, swift as it was. Asprey. For the Tigers, a rare opportunity to go down the northern side of the G. Rioli over the top, almost swallowed it. He got that high. Had he had his mouth open, it would have gone down. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. And a ball up now at half back for the Tigers. So bad, Toby's just here. You're up. Okay, here it is. It's had a good season, Rioli. Forward pressure. That X factor. Blitzars. Cotchum with him. Such a versatile player, Blitzars. And like Sir, it's come back from a serious Thanks. ankle injury, hasn't it? He has a broken leg, it was. And he hasn't touched the footy yet tonight. Same with Sam Menegola, who's had a big last month or so for the Cats. So a couple of their key runners in the midfield, the Cats, struggling to get into it. G. Lambert rove that perfectly, then kicks to a two-on-one. Caddy made a reasonable contest. Stewart, little give, OK. Stay out. in the centre. And then he comes wide, and that's a beautiful way to kick. It was indeed over the top to Guthrie. He gave a handball to Mackey, who was under all sorts of trouble. He got through one in Edwards, but not the second one. It wasn't... The best handball to set up Mackey on a run. And as a result, Graham with the footy just gets the job done, Graham. Back to Ranch. Ranch now down the line with a bit of a sidewinder, close to the boundary line. Did well there, pressed here. Almost got it on the second go. There's one of the Guthries in there. On this occasion, it's Zach. And the bad handball really giving Mackey no please. chance. Let's just put him under pressure, but once again, the support right, of the Tigers to get Jordan, numbers around a contest. Jordan. One one misses Zach, a tackle or breaks right. a tackle, there's another Tiger there to lay the next one. And Graham, the most 
inexperienced player out there tonight's made a good start. So Cat's free kick, so Smith. And that's because Nankervis is off the ground. Greg had to take the ruck. Dangerfield got the hand pass and then kicks down the line. And Greg will have to do it again. Can they exploit this tonight, the Cats? Oh, it's, they'll, they'll try and exploit it. I've liked the start of Richmond just because it will have settled their nerves down now. The last thing Richmond needed was three or four quick Cats goals. They start having doubts in their head. Even if it ends up at this at quarter time, it's a win for Richmond because they can just settle into the game now and the fear of being blown away early is all gone. Caught in the Lambert tackle nicely by the one arm there. Did well not to let it go, though, and give away the free. Cochin and Prestia combining through the middle. Kick's got to be good. It is. Caddy's able to gobble it up. Immediately turns, confronts, and see Rewalt just out of range here. Rewalt, two goes to the pocket. Kicked into the man of the mark. The extra height of Henderson on that occasion on the mark. Townsend's in and under here. I don't think it's going to come out there as Stewart's happy to hold it in. And wait for some more cat jumpers. Well done by Henderson because that kick was on. Yep. Smith gets over the top. You'd expect him to do that. Koch and Dangerfield got him down. A couple of Brownlow medalists together. Minangola couldn't quite get it away. Koch and lovely little handball gave Presti half a hope. Presti goes forward to he held on to no free. Bubbling about, bubbling about, Buse. Gee, young Guthrie was good there. His hands were terrific. Got it to Stewart. It's coming back, though. Broad's got it. Now, does he square it? He had a couple of options. He's decided not to do that. And then winds himself up and kicks to about 30 metres. They've got the numbers and they've got the mark. Caddy. Just a couple of Geelong players here. Maybe going for the mark when they needed to punch. Andrew Mackey just too deep with the punch, but Caddy read it best of all. It wasn't an aggressive punch, was it? From Mackey, it was a half-hearted punch. Back in the team, missed the last couple. Former Cat, steering it and missing, hitting the post. He's one of two Tigers out there tonight. He's played in a winning final here in Nankervis. Just a single one each. Caddy for the Cats and then Curvis for the Swans. A rare thing happening there. It actually hit both posts. Bounced off one onto the other, I think. Dangerfield, Blitzarves and Guthrie all combining for a thrust forward. And it doesn't look like it'll be successful because Floston got back as the extra to cut it off. Geez, important to Richmond, Floston. Just patrols across that half-back line. Good with his ball use, good decision maker and a steadying influence. He's had a terrific season. He's often the last one that gets the deepest point too, isn't he? Reads that well. So down the line they go again to half forward off hands. Henderson will give chase here. Presti is in amongst it. Cam Gathery, uh, cut three, kept it alive. Tui hasn't missed a game for years, Tui. Played every game this year, obviously. Hasn't missed for about four or five years. Little one off hands. Menengola got it working forward. Here's Joel Selwood. Kept it rolling with a bit of a knock on. And appealing for deliberate. Umpire Matt Stevick says, yep, and freaking Joel sort of knew. Doesn't concede often, Joel, though, does he? Even what? if he knew, he wouldn't tell you. Playing as a forward then. I think maybe that's something we look for tonight. Joel Selwood spending a bit more time forward. Ever the competitor gets the smother on and eventually gets the ball out of bounds. But... I reckon he will just look for that. Maybe Joel spends a bit more time than he normally would in the forward line coming back from that ankle injury. So Geelong able to maintain the pressure here. Smith belting forward. Dangerfield taken down, but he did okay. Scott Sell, G. Cochin, terrific there. Well, he's had a great start. The captain, Cochin, has been terrific. So have a look at this. This is what it all means tonight. The win is huge. Yeah. The win is massive. You get a home preliminary final against an interstate team, it's almost a ticket to the grand final. Talk, about, talk about leading the way. Cochin already five tackles. Not only that, Lingy, you stay away from Sydney and Adelaide, the two inform teams in the comp prior to the final starting, and probably still at this point, even though they have started. So to be able to avoid both Adelaide, in Adelaide, and Sydney, probably there as well is 
A real bonus. So there's plenty on offer for the winner. Smith. Edwards. Really good effort. Caddy, who's been prominent here in the first quarter. Good ball here, should find Townsend. Henderson did well, almost infringed. Umpire said it was okay to keep going. Here's a low ball from Dangerfield. Cotchen made him meet, uh, meet it, even if he didn't want to. Now players converge and we'll have a ball up. Duck was just pumping up the way Trent Cotchen started this game. Well, that was a great example of it there. That was just aggressive on Dangerfield. Making body contact, making him fumble the footy. I've loved his aggressive approach to the start of this footy game. Nick Curvis got over the top. Minangola went fishing, couldn't get it out. And there is Cotchen on the bottom of that. That ball nearly, nearly out, not quite. Boy, thank you. There's Josh. Again, Toby. Zach. Dangerfield going forward here at this stoppage, guys. Let's see if they can get it to him, Richard. Little toe poke by Koch in there. Not going very far. And Silward running it out. So have a look at the full forwards. Martin at one end and Dangerfield at the other. They've both kicked over 30 goals this year. 38 for Dangerfield, 32 for Martin. Both teams have struggled, sorry, uh, Bruce, for deep entries, though, at the moment. Just that single goal by that man Townsend in this opening term. Yeah, you're right, Rito, so getting it there is another thing. They're having a good... High footy here. Castagna flew off hands, pressed here. Great little touch to Rewalt. Mackie right on his tail. Rewalt centering ball. There's Martin. He too plays on. And Caddy... Gets another opportunity. A lot of forward handballs from Richmond tonight. They win the footy, they just handball the ball forward and allow those quicker players to run onto it. That was another good example of it. Well done by Rewalt to keep it alive. Put it on the face of the goals. And then Martin unselfishly. So now Caddy, just for the second goal of the quarter. Tiger fans are pumped at the punt road end. Tigers by 13 points with just two and a half remaining in the first. You're right, BT. Revolt's kick was a good one because it was hard to keep it in, and he did, and then Martin did everything right, didn't he? Gave it off. Caddy finished. They pinched a break. It's a good kick. One of those nervous kicks. 20 out directly yep. in front. One that you know you should kick. And he'd missed the earlier one yep. where he kicked the post. And what about the faithful here? <laughs> in there, thousands. So Richmond with a couple of early goals. Now Kervis's handball. Collar Jasny. Greg did well. He got down low. Collar Jasny put the tackle on. And the stoppage. Just at that centre bounce, guys. We saw the uh, contested possession numbers come up. Richmond at plus nine at the moment. It would have been a big focus coming in this game. They got smashed at Simmons Stadium in that area. Indeed they did. Richo, Graham to Hooley. Hooley wrong-footed but still got good purchase down there. Grigg tried to bust the tackle. Smith. Little firm to Lonigan. Picked up by Lambert. Has a go. No one got at it. Just misses to the right. Or was it Townsend that kicked that? Lambert. That was Lambert, Lambert. yeah. It's up to plus 10 now, that contested possessions, Richo. That is big in a quarter. That is a smashing in the contest. That's why the scoreboard reads the way it is. Richmond just cleaner and better around the contest. And Kervis and Prestia combined. Martin's hands were good to McIntosh. Hooley can kick this. He does. I think it's got through. It's a goal. He's paid the free. Oh, that's a free kick. Shepard thought the ball was within five metres. So 50 metres as well. Wow. Let's have a look. Oh, that's in the side. And, and the ball's within the five metres. The ball's within five. That's not front on contact. Stiff there. I, reckon the, I, I don't reckon the umpire really knew. I reckon he guessed then. I reckon when they see something like that, they react to the unfairness of it. But in reality, it's real. And, yeah. 
So Geelong have some fortune there, don't they? They do indeed, Bruce, because that was almost in the book. 95,000 in here currently now. Par fit on the wing. A record crowd. Mackey, Geelong, loose players everywhere. Scott Selwood on the end of this. He'll chip a little one and find Mitch Duncan. Duncan will settle with a minute to go in the quarter. And this big turnaround on the other end. Well, obviously, the free kick paid down the other end. A big talking point. Important mark here by Brandon Parfit. Body on body, contested mark. That opened up the ground for the Cats. Do they need this to settle the nerves? This to make it eight points. It would have been 20 points. Post up. So still without a goal, the Cats in the opening term. And no matter what, as much as you say, don't look at the scoreboard, it's how we play, everything like that, you can't help but glance up and see a zero in the goals column if you're the Cats players out there. It just weighs on your mind a bit. So a little one now, Taylor. So Harry within striking distance. Well... The last time they didn't kick a goal against Richmond in the opening term was 1959. It's all I knew, Harry. <laughs> He's been pretty good with the set shots, but he can be a bit nervy. He's talked about that. He's talked about the fact the first one's really important for him. This is big. Is it coming back? He's hit the post as well. So the Cats, two posters in the last minute of the opening term after Caddy had posted at the other end. And there you go, 1959, the last time Geelong didn't kick a goal in the opening term against the Tigers. Two goals it is on a fabulous Friday night at the G. It's finals. It's going to be really hard to come by here tonight. We can see that already. They've only conceded 50 goals in the last five weeks, Geelong. Only 28 of those have come after quarter time, so they really do tighten up and defend well after quarter time, the Cats. So that's probably a good thing that Richmond have a little break. So we start the second quarter here. Cochin off the ground. McIntosh gaining the benefit, being in front. And now immediately, first entry inside 50 on the head of Rewalt, punched away from him. Geelong Stewart arrives first and... We'll throw it back into play. Right in that MCC members pocket there. This being the city end of the ground. Had a bit of light drizzle early. I think that is all but gone now. Smith knocking the footy down. Prestia been a good acquisition for the Tigers. Danger at full forward again, BT, isolated. Net. They're holding him back too. He's staying back almost inside 450 on Dylan Grimes there. So can they get quick ball down to him to give him the one-on-one? -on -one? And then Curvis front spot wins the tap. Martin tapped it forward. A lot of disposals in the opening term for Martin. And then measures that kick, but cut off. Blitzarves did well. He's so athletic, Blitzarves. And Blitzarves and Sam Menegola, two players we mentioned in the first quarter, only one possession each. They're the running machines of the Geelong lineup. They've got to find a way to get into this game, get their hands on the footy. So Hawkins, Rance, Taylor playing that defensive role on Rance. Cochin talked a lot about his contribution. He just bangs that back and uh, well, Stewart waited under. Still searching, searching, searching and puts Guthrie under pressure. He coughs it up and now they're away. And Revolt's got a wonderful opportunity. He caresses and caresses to a bloke that's getting plenty of the ball forward to 50. Well, one of those moments Tom Stewart would want back. Just took his eyes off the ball, had to sit under it for a little bit. And Richmond pounced on the drop mark, the spillage. And Josh Caddy again working hard to get inside forward 50 duck and taking another mark. He kicked two goals for Geelong in the qualifying final last year, Caddy. 
Here he is in the qualifying final against the Cats tonight. And does he get a second? No, he keeps hitting the post. There's a lot of posters tonight. It was a clever kick by Rewalt, wasn't it? In other years, Rewalt there blazes away. That was a really clever kick. Four posters tonight, Duck. In fact, plus, if you want to pay the double hit, five. <laughs> five times the woodwork's been hit tonight, Bruce. You'd like a double dip, eh? Hey? Yeah. Boy. Here goes Floston. Good grab. So it's going to go back inside 50. Doesn't necessarily want to go too deep here. Someone presents up. He'd love to see that. So he waits. Now the high footy right to the square. Rewalt winding up. To he went in the air. Off hands here. Townsend it is with the footy in one hand. He was locked up. So important little stoppage here for the Cats. Defence. You can see Lonigan guarding the goal square there. Smith goes towards the boundary line and gives Stewart an out if he needed it. And he did. Inside 50 is just starting to mount up at the moment. 18 to Richmond, 10 to Geelong, and it's been on the back of clearances and contested possession. Richmond are winning it around the congestion, getting it forward and just locking it in. So Smith took that out of there, took a chance, never quite got what he wanted. G. Duncan was powerful there. Selwood gone, I think. Gone. That's what they do, the Tigers. They just do not allow you to run the footy out of their forward half of the ground with no pressure. And he's had a, not a tagging roll, but a run with roll on Joel Selwood down Prestia. Coming up for his 10th disposal, a huge tackle there. He kicks a goal on the catch, skipper. Wow, this will lift his team. He's 0-3 from set shots this year. It is a small sample. So he's now 0-4 from set shots. So the Tigers have missed a chance here, really, to put their foot on Geelong's throat. I mean, this sums up the Tigers. Last year, in 2016, ranked 18th in tackles inside 50. Lingy, this year, they're second, only to the side they're actually playing in Geelong. So there's the improvement in this part of the ground. High footy again here. Mackey's got a bit to do. Tui, nice little touch. Buse tried to buy, bore a hole through the whole lot of them. Selwood had the ball smothered by Edwards. Picked up by Tui. Banged it out of the action. Hawkins comes forward. Nice mark from him. Not much on here. Dangerfield points to the boundary and says, let's get it out in that direction if we can. And now Menangola. Hawkins been able to take a couple of marks down the line. Really important. And that's the new mobility of Hawkins, isn't it? Yep. The fact that he's prepared to move up the ground. Scott Silwood hugging the boundary line. He sort of wants a stoppage. You know what happens? It's a fair call. So he gains 40 metres. Geelong suddenly get a little bit of breathing space, don't they? They've been suffocated at the start of this term. They do, but they've got to start winning this situation. Minus 11 at the moment, the Cats. They beat Richmond by 20 in contested possessions in the game a few weeks back. Richmond dominating them around the contest at the moment. Blitzarv's able to take it away from Prestia and get another stoppage. Dominate. We made an interesting point about Martin when we were off air. Duck, a lot of the ball early, but not many metres gained tonight. No, exactly right. He's actually gained 32 metres. That's not usually his go. Selwood to Collar Jasley. Now, Collar Jasley with a careful kick and a good one. And he's got his full forward within range. He's on tonight, Tom, marking the footy really well. Protected the footy really well there, BT. I know you like to yep. put the Dukes out there, slippery conditions, but... With such a, nicely. Yeah, with such a big frame. So he gives it off and so he shakes it. So you wonder why your designated goal kicker would do that. And he can kick that distance. Yeah. No kicked, problem at all. I reckon during the London Olympics a few years ago, he kicked a very famous goal from about yeah. there, didn't he? Yeah. Until he called for it. Like, he, he probably shouldn't call for it there. Yeah, it's a good point, Richo. Give him the confidence to kick it. Encourage him to go for it. He, he's got the distance easily, Hawkins. Yeah, we all think so. It's halves now, so Dangerfield lurking dangerously. Parsons there, puff hit, went and got it. And then boundary line. So it's not exactly the goal kicking frenzy. Now, there it is. It was a little flat footed as well, yeah. Tui. Strange. I'm not Strange. sure Tui did want that. Yeah. For it. I think Tom Hawkins almost encouraged yeah. him to maybe, take it. Maybe you're right, Lingy. 
Certainly looked like that on the replay, didn't it? Yeah. Grigg with the tackle on Selwood. Eddie Stevick, the umpire. Three umpires in charge tonight. Matthew Nichols, Shane McInerney and Matt Stevick. And then Kervis got over the top. Blitzar sort of roved in the end. Didn't do much with it. Flossed and put Grimes under great pressure. Broad under a bit of pressure. No kick from Asprey. Good stuff by Taylor. Parsons doesn't get it far. Cochin measures it. He goes as hard and long as he can. Then a good mark by Revolt. And then Revolt used the ball well tonight. He gets to a one-on-one. -on -one. Good stuff, Mackey. Just held his ground. Henderson took a long time. Rioli got rid of it in a hurry. Martin back into a congested spot. Well done, Edwards. Gets it across to Lambert. Lambert's kick is going to go. What about that from the Tigers? Once Smalls. again, just pressure again. That's just incredible. James Parsons saw after that, came into this game with an injury in the Giants. Game round 23, hurt his ankle. He looked sore there. Those little buzzards. Tiger forwards just applying incredible pressure and great teamsmanship as well. They are good. Edwards. Inside 50. Got to get a touch on this too. And he does now. Rioli once again there just to make sure he gets the kick correctly. And he does as Parsons will go down inside the rooms to get a little bit of attention there. In the meantime, Murdoch. Half back, very close to the man on the mark in McIntosh. High footy, Taylor under it, over the back here, Nan Curvis in front. He goes again, Nan Curvis. Broad there, caught with the fitty, coughed it up. Selwood, little handball. Taylor, nifty little kick to Menangola. He turns around without any thought, any great direction. Had a little bit of pressure on him and lost him. But it's the perceived pressure now, BT. It doesn't even need to be real pressure because of the way Richmond have played the first quarter and a bit of this game. able to get it off to Prestige. He's been busy, Presti, hasn't he? Been buzzing about. Can he find a target forward 50? Sets it up, goes lowish to the pocket, very wide. Caddy there. And that ball not quite in or out. And now a boundary throw in. Well, we've got the Telstra tracker throughout the finals in Camden McIntosh. Big numbers to this point in the game, but Toby Nankervis, look at that, 5.5 Ks. Shows the work rate of the big man, the Ruckman, but Zach Smith matching him as well in third place. So a couple of surprises there, the two big guys, second and third on the number of Ks travelled. There is Smith, and Gola, Selwood, Murdoch, Collar Jasny, Buse, Hawkins, and now Scott Selwood with a little finishing kick. Hooley got in the way, Puffett gets the footy now, turns onto the right boot, goes as long as he possibly can, Taylor was there, Rance, and from the side, Floston is playing a cracking game of defensive footy. Oh, that's a, that's a great mark, never took his eyes off the footy. And a couple of big bodies coming at him, Wayne. So, he gives it back to Rance, just to get your breath back almost for a moment, just to measure it now. Back to Flost, and he has a bit of time, and he decides to go long and gets it into the forward half of the ground for Richmond, and they're over the back. Edwards didn't use Greg, but he goes to Castagno, has a little fumble. Lonigan didn't, did well. And then that kick from Parfit, she and Guthrie, so two kids combining together. She, Guthrie's first quarter was pretty good, I reckon. Young boy coming in, he was the surprise. Menzel out, and Zach Guthrie in. And that kick down the line, not Mark. Parfit's quick kick to a contest. Taylor and Rance. Taylor paddling. Hooley terrific. Back to Broad. So here they go. Reload. Danger. Motlock got on the end of this. No one inside 50 for the Cats. So he has to hold, hold, hold. 
He could do no more, no point yelling at him. Now he can go. Someone there, and Smith comes hard at the footy here. Selwood in the middle of all that. Prestia went without the football. Gee, Smith's having a real crack. He went again. Menengola with the handball out the back. Broad's there. Dragged to the ground. He has another go, Broad. Tries to shuffle the ball out. Dangerfield got rid of one. Not lock. Looking for the handball. Couldn't win the footy, though. That was the problem. And the Tigers just get it out of the danger zone. Buse under enormous Castagna pressure. Just got rid of it in the nick of time. He was closing fast. Sure was, Colin Jasney, under pressure. Did well. Slip reality. Buse was good a moment ago. Handball missed, though. Back to Young Guthrie. He rides it okay. Back to Lonigan. Great tackle by Revolt. Richmond are swarming here. Selwood, Colin Jasny, Richmond are all over oh, them. I mean, oh, how good was that? Yeah. What about that, Bruce? Oh, the constant attack. Unbelievable. And now the benefit of all of that 30 or 40 seconds of great defensive attitude as they get it deep in their forward line. Geelong under attack, but remember, no scoring being done in this game at the moment, so no harm being done. Prestia with a ripping tackle to finish off. They just Ola Jasny. Numbers, numbers to the footy. And smart though as well. They're yeah. picking off the receiver as well, so it's not all just bees to a honeypot. It's numbers and method with their defensive pressure. They queue up, one misses, the next one's on the way. Prestia just did something we rarely see. He actually won the ball off Dangerfield when Dangerfield had some control. But as you say, no big damage done yet to the Cats on the board. What a shot that is, Bruce. Oh, it stands. It's a remarkable night. I mean, the, the five minutes before the game was exciting enough, and this has been a ripper. So hard to get a goal, but just so exciting. Every contest. Here's Martin. Here's Martin. Here he is. Yeah, it's Dusty. Bang. Goes to full forward. Mackie got back and oh. took the mark. And Where let's not go? forget, there is still a zero sitting in the Geelong goals column. That would be weighing on the Geelong players' minds. They'd be starting to wonder, where's it going to come from? Is but it ever going to come? But only two for the Tigers there, Lingy. So probably no harm done. There's nothing in it at the moment. I know not a great feeling having not scored, but in terms of goals. But no damage done just yet. Big time Motlop with a tackle. And it was a little too rude. And Grimes will benefit here. Pup by Matty Nichols in the middle. That ball's wide, the ball kicks wide to Broad. Broad just taking a little bit of a sting out of it here. Tigers have got an overload on this side of the ground. Broad ignores that. No one on the mark. No, he doesn't. He finds one of them. This is Hooley. He'll swing on to the left. He'll reel and go. No, pocket. Have a look at it. Have a look at it in the pocket. Who's that standing there? Prestia, I think it was. Now the ball hits the deck. Opportunity for the Tigers here. Murdoch under pressure. Little handball by Castagna. Rioli's there. Castagna went back and got it again. Snapped by Butler. The three smalls combine. Butler, Castagna, they're all there. Butler with the finisher. But they all handle it. All three of them. Once again, it's just built off the back of just elite pressure in and around the footy. The Cats don't know what to do with it at the moment. I don't know where to turn. Every time they turn, they're caught with the footy. It's manic, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely manic. Well, once again, built off the back of pressure. Good, quick ha forward handball to used all night to great success. And the Tiger army just roared. Smith did well. Jim Minicola. He's had a quiet start tonight. He's had a great month, but he's had a poor first half. No flop. Five disposals, but nothing clean. I mean, he coughed one up going forward a moment ago. And we're seeing now Geelong drop simple marks like that and fumble. And they again, come back to your point, Duck. It's the pressure of Richmond and the perceived pressure that's building in the Geelong players' minds. Collar Jasny got it off Guthrie. He belts it forward and gets it to about 25 metres. Asprey getting back, paddling, paddling. Now Parsons back out there. That's good. He works it in front of him, goes to ground. Ranch did well, did very well. The soft handball over the top and they get it to the line. So, so just have a look at this. Watch Mottlop's hand. Bang. 
And just lucky he grabbed the fire, I think, instead of the other region. <laughs> Otherwise, there could have been a little bit of trouble there. 21 point Tiger lead. Wasn't quite sure what I was going to say, Doug. Is <laughs> Prestia just hurried, but Bruce mentioned it before he's the leading possession getter on the ground. Dion Prestia with 14. By the way, I know you love the crowd updates, but over 95, Bruce. What about that? Rance with the thump away. Looking for and finding Alice here. High balls, one minute goal and no. Mark paid there. You heard the umpire call. Now he's had a lot of time. Lambert in the end, harassing. Is able to milk the free. And the Tigers at half back. You mentioned Dion Prestia, BT. 14 disposals. Playing a bit of a run with tight roll on Joel Selwood. The skipper's only had five possessions for the Cats, so... Prestia absolutely dominating that matchup. Lonigan got it from Blitzars, who did well. And here's Minnick goal at the full forward. Well, oh, Reds oh. brilliantly couldn't quite take the mark. Guthrie flossed and he threw it. That was brilliant by Reds. You know, to read the fly to the footy was out of possession, but just he's, he's fearless in the air. And he's had one hard knock tonight, Duck. Yep. And just courage personified, wasn't it? It's just that hand that he always seems to get in at the right time. He's just a desperado when he plays footy. It's great to watch. You wouldn't expect anything less from the All-Australian captain, yeah, would you? That's right. Four times, I think, four in a row, Bruce, isn't it? Yeah. In terms of All-Australians, and Murdoch still not feeling the best. Just a star, this man. Alex Rance. Just plays with such great intensity and leadership and desperation. And Curvis there. Here's Cochin. Good ball to Lambert. He was off before he'd won it. He knew Scott Selwood was closing quickly. This is what happened to Murdoch here. A bit of collateral damage from Durant's efforts. He's going to stay out there. He's just given the thumbs up there, so seems to be okay. Neutral position on the wing here. Caddy got it rolling forward. Could have peeled off the handball. Took him on. Knocked one out of the way. Lambert from beyond 50. Will it clear the pack? It doesn't. Off hands. And now Martin to get it to the boundary line. He wants to keep it alive. Buse pins it to him. What does the umpire do here? Good contest. Did you? Richmond have just been able to open up. Geelong at the stoppages. Josh Caddy that time straight through the middle. Opened up a great chance for the Tigers to kick a goal. Used the forward handball effectively, and that time, Caddy did it himself. No no danger or Selwood around that stoppage. They're both on the bench, Lingy. Josh, Mark, back this way. So Caddy and Blitzarves are the ruckman here. You'd say Blitzarves has the big advantage, but can he take advantage of that? Pressed here again down low. Martin cut off by Gar Stewart, I think. All pinned. Thank you. Thank you. It's another stoppage. Hey, Mark, it's all right. It's all right. It's okay. Tom, Dusty. <laughs> yes. Nominate Richmond. Josh. Yep, back this way. So, same two. Blitzarves, Caddy. Again, Blitzarves gets a little hand. Selwood bangs it as far as he can. Out of the way he does. Might come back, though. Hooley, bit of a fresh airy there. And Nan Curvis. Happy just to hold it up here and force the stoppage. And as Lingy says, they've been on top in that area. So there, there's two guys. So he's been on the bench for five minutes now. Joel Selwood. Guthrie. Menegola. Push! There it goes. It's a free kick here. Your free kick. No, no. So it's Parfitz. Free here. Straight away. Matt Stevick, very clear in his instructions there. And we marvelled at the fact Joel Selwood got up for tonight, but we have to ask the question when he's had five touches, he's sitting on the bench, had no influence whatsoever, just how sore he is coming into this game and whether or not it turns out to be the right move to have played the skipper. Maybe it was too soon. Watched him closely in the warm-up, and I've got to say, you could see that he was playing, you know, warming up in a bit of pain, that is for sure. He knew he was going to have to play with that, I guess. There's no way out as Broad continues to scrap Thanks, without guys. the footy with Hawkins. Low scoring affair. No, he's still not coming on, I don't think, Silver. So the, oh, he's, got, he's gone back on now, has he? Okay. Just got on. Just by 21. Here's Duncan. Little ball. 
And Gola involved with the handball initially, and Pooley happy to see it go over the line and out of bounds. Just thinking about this goal this first half. It's been 40 years since the Cats haven't kicked a goal in any match in the first half. It's been 90 years in any final since the team's been goalless at half time. Hold of the arm. <laughs> and the longer it goes, the harder that first one's going to be, isn't it? So, broad at the back and then Curvis to Hooley. Hold there. Patient. On. Three and a half goals in front. Good kick down that line. Cochin did well. Butler now goes over the top. Does it stay in? Lambert. Zach Garfrey. Got it to Stewart. Dinky little kick. Not great. Kenny's been really important. Does he find a target? He does. That's a good mark. Revolt knew it was coming. And he's got the right sh shape of kick for this Rewald. He loves to... Have a little tail on his footy duck of left to right. Yeah. He's been clever at times in this quarter, being able to lower their eyes and hit targets. He would fancy himself here, I reckon, Bruce. Certainly committed, isn't he? Full commitment. How good is it looking? It's just going across the front. Is that a mark? No. Ball still in dispute. Kicking out. Now, Colin Jasny doesn't get it away very far. No, not very effectively. A lot of Tigers around the footy. Brandon Ellis copped a bit of collateral damage. Petty Dangerfield. Look at them get in and correct. Congratulate Brandon Ellis. A commitment by two players there. Brandon Ellis, Patrick Dangerfield. 50-50 ball. Just bang. That is hard footy. They both get to their feet. Get back involved in this next stop. Oh, that's a head clash there too. Crunching stuff. The ball, Duncan. Here is Dangerfield from half back. Gets it to a genuine one on one. Taylor and Rance tie each other up. The umpire said you're both in it. Now the follow up little ball here. Hawkins might have thrown it. He has with the one hand. And so in the end, Rance wins it. It was an absolute one on one, wasn't it? He's been enormous tonight, Rance. Kicks down the line to the wing and then Curvis. Good mark. Gee, Rance has been a colossus again tonight, hasn't he? Nan Curvis has kicked the centre wing. And right on top here, Richmond. They are right on top. Completely on top, yep. Bruce. It's not showing quite as dominant on the scoreboard yet, but they are all over them. Lambert to half forward. Zach Guthrie's been pretty good. Careful kick, but uh, not to a careful position, actually. Not lock. Well done, Minagola. That was really clean. He kicks the centre, and then given up by Taylor to Tui. Back to not lock. Surely, surely, yes, at long last. They've hit the scoreboard. scoring game make a big difference. Oh, it's funny that it's yeah. only 15 <laughs> points. <laughs> no, no, they have been dominated Absolutely. along, but they're only 15 points down. They're on their knees, I reckon, thinking you almost, don't you? And he's had he's had a bad night, Steve Motlop, up to this point, but that he helps. can get rolling from that. That helps, doesn't yeah. it? Here it is. Got a bit of space. Had some time. We know he's very capable in that area there. Brandon Ellis has come off with a shoulder injury as well. I think after that bump with Dangerfield earlier that we showed, there's Scott Selwood. Little handball to Mitch Duncan. He's trying his heart out there. 13th touch of the footy. Selwood back to Duncan. Duncan will gain possession here. Greg the chaser. The kick not so good. And McIntosh able to cut it off. Can they hurt them back on the inside? Martin trying to wind up. Got some support from Caddy. Here's Rewalt on the lead. Too far out. There'll be no 50 there. Rewalt turns, goes. Sees an empty goal square. Wanted to skid. Henderson gets back. And in the end, probably a good result for the Tigers. Yeah. That's, That's the, the head flash there. Yeah. And the shoulder to Alice Duck as yeah. well. 
He worried about his head, but he's come off with the shoulder. Just had to be a little bit more patient there, Jack. Yep. Just had to slow it up, wait for some options to get inside 50. There he's doing the ruck work again, Smith. Duncan did pretty well. They tried to drag it back. Revolt just cut off by Blitzards. He's held up. Oh, just thinking God. about the trade-ins for Richmond. Caddy, Prestia, and Curvis this year. Gee, they've played a role all season, but tonight... Yeah, been good, haven't they? It's been so good. 20 metres from Richmond's goal. Martin trying to get through. So both Martin and Dangerfield have been OK, but they've, they've been hurled, haven't they? They're not their normal influence. They've been good. Yep. Efforts great. there, but yeah. not great yet. Last minute of the half here. Richmond in a good scoring position. And Curvis, as Bruce just mentioned, grabbed it out of the ruck, had to get it on the boot quickly. Just pushed Dangerfield out of the way. Here's Martin. Turns on the left, gets into a good position. A little low with the footy. Grigg shoveled it out to E. Aware. Good handball, Smith. Standing start, but it's going to come back here. We've got 30 seconds in the quarter remaining. Broad's got it. Just forward to the centre. Good little ball. No, it didn't clear the head of Guthrie. So he has to wait for the troops. He would love to have got it on in a hurry. He spirals it to about 50 metres. Parsons, Taylor, toe poking it off the ground. You can see the clock. We're nearly at half time. Rance gets back, gives it to Grimes. Taylor can't quite get him down. Grimes goes long and hard. Mark taken by Selwood. Handballs off. Dangerfield! Dangerfield! Oh, yes, he does. The timing is exquisite. That is big. What a half. What a final. What a finish to the first half. The champ kicks the goal. And Geelong get the last two. And at half time before the biggest crowd that have ever been to a qualifying final, Richmond lead by nine points. Three minutes of footy late in the second quarter. Cost the Tigers perhaps a 21, 22 point lead and it's nine points only as we start the third quarter as Motlop and Dangerfield stepped up in a time of great need by the Cats. Smith, Martin, little soccer. Dangerfield waits. Cotchen. So no clean footy to be found early in this Third quarter, Mackey goes to ground but was able to slip under the tackles there. And now the umpire's got a decision to make, and umpire Shane McInerney says, We'll Thank toss you. it up. It's one of those 07 Premiership players out there tonight, Andrew Mackey. We know in his last season, along with Tom Lonigan, Smith laid it down, but to the advantage of the Tigers, but a wrap up and not going anywhere. I reckon Buse has been pretty good. He's had great pressure at times where he's had to really stand up in that first half and he's been able to do it and Geelong have needed that sort of player because they've been under enormous pressure. Selwood flicked it out well Mackey timed the handball brilliantly Dangerfield put the burners on, good kick and there you go, Hawkins covering ground again Lingy, you talked about from the tracker earlier goes inside. Yeah looking for Selwood, the read by oh, Alice was fantastic Brandon Ellis short ball. Great sign that Ellis is back on the ground. That shoulder okay. Prestia, Hawley, Mackey getting in the way of all of that. I tell you what, if Mackey hadn't have got a hand there, there were three Tigers ready to pounce and go deep into attack. So well done by Mackey. Tackle's pretty tight, 48-50 in favour of the Tigers there. And then Curvis the knockdown. Duncan went and got it. Motlop out the back. To Mackey, little kick along the ground, didn't get it the way he'd hoped. Edwards was able to dash and drill the ball long as they fly. Caddy in front off hands. Here comes Rioli, tried to spin. The tackle stuck. Lambert got it to Grigg. Grigg a snap, but it was always bending the wrong way for the left footer. They've had to be patient, Tiger fans, haven't they? Guthrie's just come from the ground, just a little bit Richmond sore and up. having a chat to the physio. No Which Richmond. one? No Cam, Cam Guthrie. I think he's going to go no down Richmond. to the rooms, guys. No, Thanks. No, no, Richmond. Richard. No, no, Richmond. No, no. So you heard, so 
No rich runs. That's exactly right. So Smith able to gift to Henderson and then Martin able to get the spot. And the reason for that, Bruce, was that they didn't nominate yep. anyone. I yep. think Duck that tried. Yep. Yep. yep, that's correct. Great smother from Dusty. Two is short. Yep. Stewart. Martin holds him up. Hold it. So Stewart decides to go carefully. Henderson, careful again. Views. Hold they on. So they've got it. Hold. 50 metres away from goal with three short kicks. Now they go short again. They've done this pretty well, actually. They Hold get the blitz half, so can they launch from here? Or they kick to a 50-50, or can they find the target? They go the 50-50 way. Down that line. Smith brought it to ground, and now Motlop away. Yeah, a little kick over the top here, looking for a bit of height, giving Harry Taylor an opportunity against the smaller Alice, but he did well, Brandon Alice. That was a different kick in from Geelong. Now, they were happy to go long down the middle a lot of the time in that first half, so a more patient approach that time. And Curvis and Smith again. Smith, good position, got a hand on it as well. Selwood charges after the footy won it. The tackle by Hooley was okay. And Curvis couldn't get it cleanly. Selwood knocks it to the advantage of Smith again. Always in the contest, Joel Selwood. Got to admire him. And Geelong at their attacking end. Mark, thank you. Ten point margin. Mark, no. You nominated Mark. You've nominated Mark. So that's the umpire. Talking to Mark Blitzarves. This nomination thing hasn't gone smoothly here today. For some reason, there seems to be mass confusion. And the confusion there was Mark Blitzarves wanted Tom Hawkins to do Mark, the ruck work we'll give there. You Who's up? Thank you. <laughs> now they've sorted it out. Mark Blitzarves didn't want to do it last time. Had to. Now it's Zach Smith. And then Curvis able to belt it forward. Press here and Scott Selwood. Caddy in the boundary throw in. Got a lot to think about players out there and got to put a nomination in every now and then. It becomes a little Toby, tedious, I reckon. Yeah, this, this, this is silly, this yeah. nomination process, Bruce. It's yeah. not what footy's designed for and what it's about. It's an Michael. instinctive game, isn't it? Yep. So Smith lays it down. Martin couldn't quite. Sheld's imposing himself a little in this first minutes of the second half. Menegola wrapped up by Cotchin. Ball not quite out. Hooley and Selwood fighting hard. Hooley did well. Martin gets involved. Hooley toe poked it till he tries to hold it up. Now Curvis all over him. Ball not quite out. Still now it's out. Duncan working through. Motlop's hands were quick. Selwood getting it over to Selwood. Yep, they were. And then Murdoch taken down. Great tackle. And Richmond swarming. And then Grigg gets a high ball away. He just got it away, Bruce. A lot of pressure at the moment. Smith. Just a chance to release that pressure now for Smith. His ball looking for Duncan. Got in the right spot there. Duncan couldn't make it stick. Dangerfield. Little fumble. Goes back. Retrieves it again. Lambert. Grigg. Can they find anyone on the end of this? The Tigers, an ultra-defensive start to this third quarter from both sides. And that's, that is Cam Guthrie. Look there, Richo, what do you think? Yeah, it doesn't look good. That is a big ice pack, and it is on that right calf of Cam Guthrie. He looked really sore when he came off. He was limping badly, so that's not a good sign. Look like they're a man down, doesn't it? So Menengola pressed here again. Cam Guthrie was sharing the role on Dusty Martin. Him and Scott Selwood tag-teaming on the Richmond champion. So now Scott Selwood's going to have to do it solo. Big blow for the Cats. Been a while since either team got the ball inside 50 in this passage of play. Martin gang tackle. Correct disposal. Just put it on the ground. Put it on the ground. Geelong free kick. Okay, go for it. So Duncan, the recipient. Short to Motlock. Once Duncan finds him now. Yeah, Duncan been impressive. Little handball to he. Sold a little fake wide. Drilling kick to Mackey. Looking to reel and go. Cats have got a lot of players here. Taylor's got deep. Rants closed very, very late. Now Hawkins picked up by Parsons. Centering ball. And Hooley did really well. Tight 
Great Thank start. Guys, out, please, Alex. In fact, I reckon Geelong seem to have lifted in this third quarter. I know it hasn't been fluent, but they seem to be just controlling it at the moment. Unlike Richmond in the first half, where they've dominated in most aspects of the game. Cochin. They have had the edge in some crucial contests at the start of the third. There's Cam Guthrie, right calf, looks like he could be out of the game, but I think Geelong are winning the crucial okay. one-on-ones and have had the better of the contested ball early in this third. And that's the way it feels up here, yeah. for sure. And BT, we're with you. And Richo, just a slight edge to the Cats. Nothing on that board, really. It's been the story of the night, pressed here into a contest. Minigola did well and then crashes through. The ball will go to a one-on-one -on -one or a one-on-two. Oh, Hawkins with a real chance. Over the top pass. It should go. He does. Geelong will kick the last three. They're within a kick. Well, there you go. BT and Richo, you were right. That, that feeling is now a reality that they have got the first strike in the first half. Uh, Prestia just gave a handball that wasn't on there. Probably had to get that one on the boot. Yep. Get some meterage. Gave it to a player under more pressure than what he was under. Meters are hard to get tonight, Duck. You, you've got to get them every time you can. Yep. <laughs> had an advantage of 21 points after the Butler goal, 16 minutes into the second quarter, and now they lead by three. Parsons with the first here in the second half for footy. Prestia to Nan Curvis, almost left it for Graham then. Now he's drawn it back in Graham here, he will need to be careful. Geelong have managed to stop Richmond from controlling the footy as well. Look at the marks so far in this third quarter. Only two for the Tigers. So the Cats starting to win the ball, but also stopping Richmond from controlling the footy. Tom Selwood getting some attention to the nose. And now Asprey and Hawkins appealing. I think he might have a win here. He does. Asprey knew. So did Hawkins. Pulls it deep into the pocket, looking for Menengola. And this is, I think, a correct decision. I mean, he tried to disguise it as a bit of an accidental fumble. Keep that meter. So, shallow throw in then, Curvis just slipped through the fingers. Hawkins taps it, gets a fair bit on a danger field. Right to the goal, square bouncing ball, and Rance. Able to get it over the line. She ran some Taylor. It's been fabulous to watch, hasn't it? It's tense, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You, they are both Alex. so strong. Alex. It's the Alex. battle within the war, isn't it, those two? Alex. So Geelong haven't been in front all night, but they're within two points. And the Tigers suddenly on that back foot. Castagna, one of... So, Cam Guthrie, uh, Doc White from Triple M, what can you tell us about Cam? Yes, uh, Bruce, bad news for Guthrie, uh, out of the game with a calf injury, and it was an actual incident. He came off very despondent. I don't think it's a knock, I think it is a true strain of the upper calf. He's iced, he's in the back row with the jacket on, so I think his evening's done. How many, how many weeks would that mean, Doc? No such thing as a one-week uh, calf, Bruce, it's probably three to four. Yeah, well, that's not good news for the Cats. Cam Guthrie... We speak of right with that car. That was Dr. Here Rowan White. Thank you for giving us that update, Doc. Smith and boundary line. And that's off the boot, I think. Yes, it will be out of bounds Scott on the Selwood. fall. So a Scott, Scott Selwood free here. Dangerfield trying to claim it. And Selwood would have been very happy for him to claim it. Back over. So Matt Stevick sets the mark. Dustin Martin speaking very quietly to the umpires. He's done a couple of times tonight. Long, deep ball. Got to go over the back. He did Grimes. Little handball here from Graham. Looking for the boundary. Alice didn't quite get over. Tigers are under pressure here now. Collar Jasny couldn't handle it. Dangerfield's there as well. Guthrie. Collar Jasny. Round the body. Murdoch. Top of the square here. Taylor. Tried to trap it. Red soccer. And just to behind, the Cats are looking dangerous from Blitzarves there. Within a point. Kick the last three. How nervous are these Tiger fans right now? Well, the Cats fans are trying to get a chant going here. They're really trying to will their team on now. 
So Richmond just can't get it out of the, the back half at the moment. Dangerfield forcing forward. Menengola wanted a little give and then forced. So put it over the line. So Geelong doing to Richmond a bit what Richmond did to them in the opening half. Just able to lock the ball inside their forward half of the ground. Yeah, and on the back of winning the contested possession this quarter, as opposed to the first half, Richmond won it by 19. Cats winning it at the contest and being able to pump it forward. And again, a non-contested throw in. Menengola lifting after a quiet start. That ball didn't go far. Now Curvis belts it down. Scott Selwood held up by Lambert. There's no lucky balls at the moment, Duck, to put someone in space. No. It's just very careful, isn't it? Yeah, no, the Cats' pressure has been enormous in this third term. Just not allowing Richmond any clean ball. All one-on-ones here at the stoppage, except for this man, Blitzarfs, who had no direct opponent. Got it to Selwood. Scott Selwood looking for Hawkins. Maybe a little hold on Hawkins. Umpire didn't see it, though. Dangerfield to puff it. He sold a bit of foot candy. Now the centering ball. Mark will be paid here. Guthrie. Zach Guthrie, the inclusion for Dan Menzel. We were all a little bit surprised when Dan Menzel was left out. But he has been good tonight, Zach Guthrie. Worked extremely hard, and that is a good grab under a lot of pressure. Gee, I wonder whether he'd just be a touch jittery here, Lingy, given the fact he hasn't kicked a goal at this level, and it's a big final and a big moment. And to put the Cats in front, in front of this hostile Richmond crowd, Guthrie, the young man, scores a level. Well, both teams have missed some shots, haven't they? And those nerves kicking in. So they've lost him to himself. They can't get it over halfway. Maybe here. Castagna's had a quiet month and a quiet night. Motlock goes low. Edwards cuts it off in front of Murdoch. Now Richmond just need to have some composure with the footy. We showed the mark stat before this quarter. They have not been able to control it at all. So I like this. Just slip into this mode for a little bit. Get the foot in your hands again. And they've done it well, Lingy, haven't they? They've been able to get it out to Rance. And then Rance goes down that line. Revolt in a good spot. That's beautiful. But not paid. Thought he had a fair bit of it. Can he turn his man inside out? He can't. And it's a boundary throw in. Seemed to control it, didn't he? Yeah, a fair piece of it. Yep. Four marks in that passage there for Richmond. They only had two up until that point. So just being able to control it a little bit now is going to be important for Richmond. I thought he had enough of that. Then Bruce Blitzarves, little touch, looking for Selwood. Edwards now finding Greg. Greg, little soccer. Gained about five metres. <clears throat> Cats have got it covered. Here's Hooley running onto his favoured left boot. High footy, trying to turn and face the footy here. Castagna ground level. Jack Rewalt lurking. Soccer off the ground. Just misses. Half a metre in it by Jack. So the Tigers have been able to move it to their end. Very important. It doesn't come out he easy here, though. So how do the Cats play this? As Richo said, the last time they were careful coming from the kick out. This time... A half and half a one. Hurley, little give. Edwards taken off the ball. Henderson and Edwards. Hurley with half a chance here. He's wrapped up by Guthrie. Zach Guthrie and a ball up. He has been impressive, the young guy, hasn't he? He hasn't been found wanting tonight. No. Just have to lock the ball in there, half of the ground there, the Tigers. Yep. Have to get a few repeat entries. Blitz halves. Gets a second crack and did well. He cleared it, didn't he? Flossed with courage. Good mark. We've sung his praises earlier tonight. No switch on again. Geelong defending that magnificently. No, neither team tonight has been able to get any switches at all. It's been down the line all night for both teams. I can't remember one, Richo. No, uh, it's, it's, it's been none all night. Both teams have done it beautifully. Lonigan here scrapping it out with Jack Rewalt. And Geelong just trying something a little bit different with their forward line. Jed Hughes has now gone forward. For the Cats, as Paddy Dangerfield takes a rest. Jed View spent most of the preseason training as a forward, but when he got his way back into the team, went back. Well, they're going to try him, see if he can pinch a goal. So here goes Selwood, Blitzarves, Cochin somehow got it out of there. Selwood forced by Martin. Nice little touch from Rewald, back into Cochin. Here's a go for Edwards. Can he get control? Left foot snap, didn't get enough on it. Stewart 
immediately sends it out. So Broad and Parsons. Parsons with a goal in this turn. Broad able to turn him. And can he find the target? That's a good kick to Butler. Butler stretching. He gets on his bike. Butler kicks to the right spot. The hot spot. Revolt flies with a number of others. Scott Silver did well. It's a hot footy for Tui. He's wrapped up. They get a forward stoppage. 30 metres from goal. Jack flying hard and high there. The other thing I'd say we haven't seen tonight, I don't think either team has been able to transition once from defensive 50 to forward 50. No, spot on there, Richo. Just been no easy fluency or movement of the footy. It's been all this sort of stuff. And here's Rance again to repel. So Richmond getting good multiple opportunities here. Can they score from them though here? That's the question. That's what they couldn't do in the first half. And thus, just the one-point lead, although Rioli... Steps between them. Thought about the short to Edwards. It's still on if he wants. Stewart there just kicking off the back foot then. Lent back. Rioli read it nicely. And this has been an important five minutes of Richmond. You asked for a duck. They needed to lock the ball in their half. They've done it. Well, they've all backed away from him. He gives it off to Edwards in the end. And now Edwards will definitely be within range. But... A really tough kick. Any mark inside 50 for the rest of the game from either team, you, you've just got to have a shot at goal. They are as rare as hen's teeth, and you've got to make the most of them. Agree with that, Richo. They are gold. 4-7 from set shots this year for Edwards. There is the task to set the Tiger fans alight. He's got it bending back, not enough. Just late with that little tail on the footy. So, well, they've locked it in, given themselves multiple opportunities, haven't they? Yep. So, 3-10 to 3-8. Stewart goes as far as he can there. And at the back, Greg, bit of a mix-up there by the two cats, men and goal and Blitzar. So, where does Greg go with it? He sets it to about 20 metres out. Henderson sets himself, revolt the flyer. Castagna, revolt, searching, cut... Not Revolt in the end, it was Townsend searching, couldn't quite. So look at the two cats here. Well, they'd set it up too, Menegol and Glitzar, the two taller players. It was a set play and neither of them could go for the footy. That's the swing we just spoke about. All cats early, Richmond have done well to reverse it. So here is Blitzars. Caddy, can't get a kick away, Greg tried to tie poke. Doesn't get there, Rioli, Sirwood, Tui, Stewart under pressure. He gets a bit on it, though. Gets it outside the 50. Broad takes the mark. Not sure if he's got the length, has he? Well, well, Rance just look, getting over yeah. to him and telling him, slow down, yeah, take yeah, the time. Yeah. He's never kicked a goal, so I'm and not sure if he's ever had a shot from here. Do you know, Richo? Has he got, well, he's got to go very short, and it's good. And Nick Floston can kick the ball from 50, 51, so good kick. Two so, Maddie, this is what you were talking about a moment ago, Richo. Anything from here, have a shot. Well, we just haven't seen many tonight. And the, the ones that we have seen, players haven't been able to convert. So, the team that converts these now is simply the team that will win the game. Pretty simple. One goal this season. He's hit it well. That is a good, good, good. That is a great kick. Don't you love it when someone takes responsibility? Yeah. Well, they've tried to just bomb the ball in at times in this quarter. In the last five minutes, Lee, they've kicked at the contest. They get all those players front and square, and it hasn't worked. On that occasion, lower your eyes. Broad. That's what they have to do. And Broad did it well, didn't he? Yeah, and we, we spoke about those deep entries, entries in the first half. Maybe they've got to be shallow and take your chances, as Richo said. Big kick, big moment. He knew it. The Tiger Army knew it. And it was smart by Richmond, by Broad. Sense that Geelong were just guarding space, guarding grass. Get the mark inside 50 and a great goal by Floston. Gee, that was a good knock to Dangerfield. They couldn't make it work in the end. Cotchin to Martin. And Martin threw them. Got a little handball in here to McIntosh. They all peel off him. McIntosh with the driller. Probably needs to handball a little more. Dangerfield got caught. And the Tigers pay the advantage. This time McIntosh is clear and concise. To Dusty Martin goes. The kick is good to Edwards and he marks directly in front. Big minute or two in the game. How good was Martin? 
just to burst away initially. Centre clearance and then the tackle from Rewalt. Their forward pressure again is just enormous. And he knew he was going to cop the belt there, Martin. He absorbed that and still stayed steady on the kick. Kept it nice and straight and upright. And the result is this. Edwards from 35. For two in a row. The Tigers have got it. They lead by 14. So finally getting a little bit of reward for consuming so much of the footy inside 50. Two in a row, back out to 14 points. And they'd feel good about themselves now. Jim Martin was important there, wasn't he? All Richmond, the last five minutes. Happy supporters everywhere, including Mickey Boy. Since that Zach Guthrie set shot, seven inside 50s to zero. Richmond's way. They kicked the first three, the Tigers. Cats got the next three. Tigers have got the last two. Selwood Dangerfield combined again. Dangerfield running hard, spraying it wide, out on the floor. So, once again, Richmond get some control. Five, six minutes ago, it looked like Geelong were well and truly on top. Not on that scoreboard, but they were getting the most of it. Scott Silver did well. Got through, goes back to Dangerfield. He knows he's got a long leg. Does he get it away? Does Guthrie? And then Lonigan, and they're close to the line. Parfit worked his man, but he couldn't quite get back. And it was too short for Hawkins. So a stoppage, forward 50 for the Cats. Don't worry about that. In the context of this Number game, that's a bit of a win for the Cats. Get a stoppage in their forward end now. Just under five minutes remaining in the third quarter. And Curvis, Prestia and Edwards all combining beautifully from the stoppage. And now Henderson couldn't quite grab it. And that'll go to Henderson, I think. And he's just giving the ankle a little bit of a tweak here as well, Henderson. Down the line here. Looking for Hawkins and finding loves to flop forward or fall forward when he marks and he loves the little kids slide along the ground, doesn't he? He does. He's worked hard up to the footy tonight. He's been the best forward on the ground. He's been really good. He's hit up leading tonight. He's the only player that's been able to find space. So Colin Jasny gets to about 25 minutes out. Smith was a big fly. Two he's in a good spot. Can he bring it back? Oh not quite. Shoot. It wasn't far off, was it? Did that, it looked like a goal from here, didn't it? To me, that looked like a goal. I thought the umpire got too far, the goal umpire, that is, too far into the points. It certainly hooked back late, didn't it? Wow. We will investigate that a little further for you. And just have a little bow peep. It's a tough one to call, I know. It went so high. Here's Duncan. In the meantime, the Cats go. No, they don't. Stolen here by Hooley. Little kick from him off hands. Quickly, Collagesny in the end. Scott Selwood now funneling the ball out here to Duncan. Beautiful kick to the big launcher. The missile launcher. Here he is, Tui. Watch him go bang to the top of the square. Didn't get great elevation on the ball. Broad got a hand to it. Had to go Parsons did. I tell you what, so did Townsend. Try to run away with the footy, Murdoch. Under real pressure here, the Tigers. And Selwood might have got into the back of Ashbury or Grimes. Is it Dangerfield it was in the back? Have a look at this, guys. It's hard to tell from that yeah. angle. We were, we were in our box here. We were right behind it, but looked across this side of the goals, did it? No, it definitely went behind the yeah, post. Young yeah. got it right. So Rance. Smith's big fly. Can't quite grab it. Edward's been important. Cochin held up. So we talked about maybe the game opening up slightly. Well, still goals so hard to get. One to the Cats, a couple to the Tigers in this term. Silwood. Collar Jasny. Left foot to about 40 metres free kick. And that's just a result 
of Tom Hawkins, what he's done all night, getting his body in front. And being able to go at the ball and lead up at the footy as Duck and Richo highlighted. The Richmond fans not happy. Let's have a look. Oh, left arm a little bit around the waist, but not a heap in it. Well, we saw him earlier tonight, handball to Tui when we thought he was within range. He's played well, but he hasn't hit the scoreboard. Massive kick here. It's a good one. It's a beauty. Geelong get an important goal. And Richo, that puts a little icing on what you said a moment ago about him being probably the dominant forward in the match. Yeah, I think you always find as a key forward, if you do your work up the ground, you get on your bike, you hit up and you offer an outlet kick for your halfbacks and your mids. I always think you find that as the game wears on, you get some reward inside 50 and he deserved that. Tom Hawkins, he's played a really good game tonight. Yep. Tom Hawkins, terrific night. He's highlighted in the Telstra tracker. Look at that, Tom Hawkins. The surprise, the second most kilometres covered in this game. 10.2. Huge surprise. And that shows his work rate, as Richo said, up the ground, then getting back inside forward 50. And that is amazing, isn't it? Oh. Richo brings up a good point. The work he does up the ground, you tie your opponent out as well, and then you start to get reward later in the game. I think a lot of the kilometres covered by the key players tonight are because there's been so many stoppages and not a lot of bursts out of those midfield stoppages. It's always the defenders and the forwards that are on the move repositioning. The mids haven't covered a lot of ground tonight because it's always been in this situation here. Good point there, Richo. Smith, Joel Selwood here at the ground level. He almost was tempted to shovel it out and then professionally locked it in. Umpire Matthew Nicholas saying thanks to Dion for giving him the footy. Manners are nice, even in the stressfulness of the environment they're in. Scott Selwood got one high, we'll get the free here. Oh no, it's going to go the other way. Caddy. Right on the final series logo. High footy. Jack Rewalt can't get a oh. jump at it. What a great mark. Dangerfield going back. What about that? Just wanted it more than anyone else. Could you imagine if he'd taken that in the forward 50? <laughs> and the back. That was spectacular, wasn't it? Thrown himself with the footy oh. in the air tonight a number of times. Just slipped through Caddy. Hawkins again up the ground. So it's a Parfit. Parfit's kick just eluded Parsons. Broad. Edwards. Edwards got it away. Greg ridden into the ground. To his little give okay. Smith hot ball for Mackey. Parfit, can he get it over to Stewart? Stewart outnumbered. He did okay, Stewart. He runs it forward. He has to release it now. He does. He did well. Mackey to Parfit. Parfit, now they've got the numbers, the Tigers. Asprey getting back. Get some shield. Now that's a 50-50, maybe. Stewart v. Martin. Dusty. Oh, Dusty. That is classic Dusty. Fend it off. Runs away. Bursts down the wing. Kicks to half forward. Revolt. Did well. Gives it a skid. Have a look at this. What a goal. Martin to Revolt. That's as good as it gets team-wise. And getting on the end of it is little Prestia. That's the Brownlow medalist, I reckon. Here's the free kick first against Scott Selwood. A couple of highlights, Paddy Dangerfield, brilliant. But don't worry about any of that. This was Dusty Martin. That's what great players do. Turn 50-50 balls into a goal for your team. Dusty Martin opened up the entire game there. Jack Rewalt, 50-50 ball, and gets it over the top. Dion Prestia, the one who says, thank you very much, boys. Yeah, he's spot on. 50-50 balls. So a couple go to Richmond and easy goal game. Just starting to open up a little bit more now. So That's what we saw in the package then was Dangerfield at one end taking that remarkable mark. Dusty at the other, Dusty at the other end, as you say, Lingy, doing the wonderful thing that only some can do. And all of a sudden a goal. Siren sounds. What a way to complete the quarter, Bruce. Look at the Richmond fans get up. Points the Tigers.
Goal, sir, with Paddy Dangerfield, Trent Koch and Dustin Martin in the middle. One on one. That's what it's about here. It's been like that all night. Richo, a little bit of rain falling. Yeah, it is. That's not heavy, Brian. Just a light shower. Start of the last quarter. Can Richmond push themselves into a prelim final or will it be the catch, Stewart? With the tackle, you heard the umpire's call. Here's Dangerfield. Remarkable mark towards the end of that third quarter. Now the ball on the head of Floston. Tommy Hawkins really made him earn it. Grimes couldn't get hold of it. Asprey tried to get through. Cat's got the numbers around the ball here. Slick handball there by Selwood. That was Scott. Murdoch couldn't quite wrap it up, though. And plenty of Tigers surrounding him. And he's been told to get rid of it or to be pinged. And he has. So Edwards now with a clobbering ball up towards half forward. Big opportunity here for Jack Rewalt. Lonigan got him in a good tackle. Little handball to Duncan. On to Dangerfield. And out wide. Won't see par fit. Get on the end of that. It hurts. Knee in the back there from Tommy Hawkins. Well, Cats turn this one over. They do. Abuse. Well, he tries a dusty, doesn't he? And gets it back to Dangerfield. But Dangerfield's kicked only as far as Cochin. This quarter only one minute old, and already Richmond have caused Geelong to either fumble the footy or turn the ball over a few times. Their pressure. It's what we've highlighted all night. Started this last quarter great. And then Curvis the target. Revolt kicking around the body. Tui getting back. Play on. Play on. Made the call now. He's got a decision to make here. What does he do? We know he's a good kick. He gets himself into a little bit of a muddle. Good chase there by Revolt. Good kick though. And Dangerfield's hands were magnificent. Oh, he went to play on. Not the right thing to do there. Ellis got it from Prestia. Back to Asprey. Now Asprey with a telling kick to about 50 metres. Till he worked it pretty well. Lonigan couldn't quite. Rioli, Edwards to Martin. Oh yes, and he's in the pocket. Gives it off. Gives it off. And Jack misses. Misses. And Martin's influence is growing. Yeah, isn't summed it? it up again beautifully there. Does he almost want him to have a shot there? Maybe a little too unselfish. Running towards goal. In the end, a good decision. And in the end, Jack was caught with a difficult kick as yeah. well on the run, wasn't it? The right foot banana from there was always going to be a big challenge. Lonigan. So what can the Cats do here? Joel Selwood funneling out the handball to his mate. Two of the guys that can absolutely turn the tide here. Cotchen where his legs taken that tackle from Selwood. Selwood had a, crick, a second go, but it wasn't enough. Prestia, the human meatball, arches the back. Little low ball, need a clean pick up here from Rewald. Couldn't quite do it. Muston, uh, Dusty Martin with the stiff arm again. Did well. They slide in every direction. He's got this on line. Griggs got a mark turn. Greg kicks the goal, but make no mistake about it. Dusty from a long way out, channeling that ball into a dangerous spot. It was just a great effort. And he, even he is having a little bow peek at the screen going, gee, I was very dusty like then. We want the great ones to play big matches in September. And this is the first real big look at him in his prime in September, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And he hasn't let us down, has he? No. Absolutely broke. He's a match winner, this bike. And maybe that's a match winning lead. Geelong need the next goal. They've got to get it. I often say it, Bruce, there are a lot of accumulators in our game. And then there's those that do big things in big moments. And Dusty's doing that exact thing tonight. And he's been the difference. He in the has. second half in crucial moments, yep. Dusty's been the difference. Lambert running onto it and Lambert, oh, just hooking it away. They know, they know it is so close. Well, that equals the biggest margin of the game, Bruce, 21 points, which it was at the 16-minute mark of the second quarter. Duncan, so the Cats under enormous pressure here now. Duncan looking for a bit of length. Taylor oh. over the back. Selwood, magnificent at ground level to win the footy. Menengola got a piece of it. Bad bounce for Puffett. Now Rance. Puffett closed really quickly on him. Didn't give him a lot of time with that handball. Grimes. 
taking it over the boundary line and a beautifully disguised move. So where did Geelong get that break from? Where can they get back into this match? How does it happen? They need four goals to win, and they've only kicked four goals. They've had a great ability once they've got the ball inside their forward 50 to lock it in, so that's the first thing. Let's see if they can get there. They can't. I'm not sure if Pressy has played a better match than this. He hasn't played in a bigger one. Lonigan, Martin, Martin, Hasling again. Here he goes again. He's 55 out, running bouts. Little kick, a beauty. What a game he's playing. That service to a butler, if ever there's been one. <laughs> What, what a game he's playing. Well, it's brute power and it's unbelievable speed, but it's also composure and skill and just touch. He had every right to have a shot then, but he knew what the right thing to do for the team was in the right moment. And listen to this as he comes off the ground. So Butler, after all of that, Misses. Ooh. He knows. Could've he knows. Could have been the nail, that yeah. one. Any goal here from Richmond, a winner for me. Yeah. Yep. Damien Hardwick said only yesterday that this was the best team he coached. And they stand up to finals football the way that they've been taught and played. But the proof would be in the pudding as to whether or not they could do it tonight. And so far, they certainly have. Of hands here. Rioli now. Mackey pulls it in. Gee, Dusty Martin. Been absolutely incredible. Many expected to win the Brownlow in 17 days. And if he does, he'll be the second Tiger in just 10 months to accept the award. Of course, Conchant back in December. And now here at the MCG, qualifying final. The biggest game that any of these Tigers have played in their lives out here right now. Guthrie soaked up here by Butler. That's pinned, so... That's the speed there of Butler. That's why he's in that forward line. Not just about goals, but about that. And that doesn't look much, does it, Duck? But Geelong actually had numbers that were going to serve onto that. He just had to halve it. It's a stoppage they can set up now. Greg did well, knocked it down, retrieved the footy himself. Here's Rewalt lurking, got himself in a good position. Now Rioli off the front, right foot snap around the body. A lot of pressure coming at him. Didn't get great purchase on it. Can I just highlight about how, why we've been raving about Richmond's pressure tonight? Patrick Dangerfield, the champ, the Brownlow medalist, going at 31% by foot. That is his worst efficiency as a Geelong player. That's what Richmond have done. They've caused a good player to turn the ball over. Just a good player. So well done, Townsend. Rioli, Graham, Graham to Lambert, and Lambert might have finished it. They are on their way to the prelim, you reckon? I don't reckon I've drawn the early crow. There is a crow in the prelim, but I don't reckon I've got the early one here tonight. Oh, you just knew that the way they played footy would stack up in a final because it's built off the back, and we keep saying it, but pressure, tackle. They're a great team. So they're surging, and we talked about what was at stake tonight for the winner. Oh, the road, if you win the game tonight, the road to the grand final is just so much smoother. Yep, you've still got to win a prelim final, but it'll be against an interstate team here. Oh, not so quick, you blokes. Dusty Martin, you the Tigers have been able to put themselves in bother in positions like this before when we thought they were home. Martin loads up, 60 metres out high, 40 Townsend! Townsend's mark, but it will be an acute angle. He's just touched it two times. This will be his third position, and he's had one kick. And he's kicked the one goal, the first goal of the night. He's got to get back a bit further here, BT. Think he's way through it? Yes, Tom. Take his time, use his 30 duck. He knows what he's going to do. He knows he's going to run around and kick it around the corner. He goes now, the right foot, it's there. The Tigers have kicked three in the last quarter. Unbelievable. Been 
Because he had a stat earlier tonight. How many kicks has he had and how many goals? Well, 21 kicks, 13 goals, Bruce. It's that's not a bad, crazy, uh, isn't it? Not a bad ratio, is it? <laughs> that is, that's just absurd. Impressive. He's done his job tonight. Two goals. So two kicks, two goals. BT's just told us 21 kicks as a Tiger for 13 goals. Martin starting it all again. Richmond charging away here. 16 years since they've won a final. Oh, the smother brilliant. Lambert going. Kicking to full forward. Buse, who stood up pretty well tonight. Little kick going back to Motlock. And Lingy, the Cats have won two of their last eight finals coming into tonight. Motlock, who shaped more than one tonight. He has. It's a bad one to win. Uh, it's going to be two out of the last nine, Bruce. They've been found wanting. Disappointing, but brilliant by Richmond. And a good brand taken by Castagna as well. He's not meant to take a contested mark no. inside 50. Been quiet tonight. His pressure's been good. That's what he's there for. That's all they're expected to do. If, if they get a goal or two, that's a bonus. But given given the low-scoring nature of this game, if he kicks this, it's 40 points. That's a shellacking. <laughs> uh, Richmond have put the foot down. They have surged, and Geelong have capitulated in this last quarter. 23 goals for the year. As you say, Lingy, to make it an even 40 points. And four straight goals, and he's got it. He's got it. Four straight for the Tigers. 40 points. And BT, you wonder how this now impacts on next week for the Cats, don't you? How does this impact for the Cats next week? Listen to this. What a night we've had at the G. 40 points. Dangerfield measures the kick to 4 4, gets over Minangola, getting back Edwards, good pick up. Oh, and then he just brushed aside Blitzars. Lambert's been important. Rance, so good. Kick wide to you know who. Inside Martin goes to Butler, and then Butler goes and finds Caddy, and it is a shellacking. Gee, the last time the Tigers won in front of a 90,000-plus crowd, Bruce, Easter Monday back in 1982. And you know that because you were playing your ninth game of footy, I was oh, told. Oh, no, I only just found out. I did not know that. <laughs> but I do now. That's how long it's been since they've performed, what I'm saying, on the big stage. Yeah, no, it's, it's incredible. I mean, look, all these numbers. Caddy's been important. He was important in a tight first half. He's kicked two against the team. He kicked two four in the corresponding game last year. And Duck, I, I, I keep thinking how great Richmond are, but I keep thinking, what does this do for Geelong next week? It's, uh, well, it's soul-searching, isn't it? Oh. Soul-searching stuff, and, and those stats that you brought out before, two finals in the last, last nine. nine games. Yeah. Since they won the flag in 2011. Yeah, it's damaging, isn't it? Oh, it is, yeah. And it's going to be hard for them to come back next week now. And this is on the Geelong leaders too now. The position they're in, Hawkins, Taylor, Motlop, all trying to work out what's going on. Not happy, absolutely not happy, and so they shouldn't be. 46 points, Richmond brilliant, Geelong terrible in this last quarter. I, I terrible. Know it, I know it sounds a lot, but just the five goals in the 14 minutes that we've played in the last quarter has been really the difference here. Other than that, it was a very, very tight game. But somehow the Tigers have just busted this one wide open. Motlop now. 
Inside 50, penetrating ball. Hawkins there, and what a mark over the top. And Rance committing the body regardless. Not even thinking, how do I land when I'm upside down? <laughs> what a mark. What a mark. Oh, I reckon Damien Hardwick, though, Duck, might just say to Alex, Dusty Martin, Trent Cochin, you might spend a bit of time on the bench now in this last 10 minutes. So wide with the footy for Rance. And free kick to... The big fella, Nan Curvis. He's worked tirelessly tall, yep. tall tonight as well. He has all year, Duck, hasn't he? A bit of revelation. Stewart wins that one over Martin. Left foot kick. Back into a contest. Lambert, well done. Flossed in his goal. So important in that third term. Duncan, clever kick to Buse. And then Buse's little give. Murdoch's been quiet. He's kicked a couple out of bounds on the full so far tonight. And the boundary throw in if Martin's been your best duck, is Rance close to your second best? He has to be, doesn't Christy he? Christie is in Just, the mix too, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. But Rance, Dominate, he's been unbelievable tonight not, not in possessions we know he doesn't get, always get a lot of possessions but just those hands and the spoils the influence that he has in so many contests Hawkins quick one from Dangerfield along the ground Grimes meeting the footy Asprey, Rance the three main tools in defence for the Tigers they get a clearing ball out wide now Mackey has got to give chase how many more games has he got left Mackey. Yours. Penetrating ball inside. 50. Hawkins oh. launching. Couldn't quite hang on. And the Tigers are going to face in a prelim final. They're going to face GWS, Port or West Coast. How good a position are they in? This way, keep that meter. Says it all, doesn't it? They're going to start favourite whatever happens next weekend on this weekend between those three clubs. Geelong will face the winner of tomorrow's game at the SCG, the Swans and the Bombers. And Both the... teams have beaten the Cats this year and the Swans, we know, they've given them all sorts of trouble the last two times they've played each other. And Cam, the winner of that has to go to Adelaide. It's a tough road. Yep. <laughs> a very tough road from here. Hawkins did well. Left foot to full forward. Lonigan in a bit of a wrestle. Taylor Parsons misses. Kicked a goal on the third. It has happened quickly, hasn't it? I mean, at three-quarter time, you felt that last goal to Richmond, the, the Martin down the line, uh, the run down the line, and the Prestia goal. You felt that gave Richmond a slight edge, but only a slight edge. Only a slight edge, because this year, Geelong's last quarters have been huge. Oh, phenomenal. Dominated last quarters, and it's gone completely the other way, and that is credit to Richmond. Oh, no. Even this, oh, the game's done, it's finished, but this is mature. Keeping possession, kick mark, controlling the footy. What I want to ask you, Duck, and the next opportunity we get in break of play here, is just how the Tigers control this incredible wave of emotion. We saw the Dogs enjoy it last year. Do you push it back? What do you do with it? I think you do have to. You have to embrace it. I mean, this is something special. Embrace it for a couple of days, BT, then, it, then it's back to work. But the most impress impressive thing about this team is... They don't rely on it. It's just based off basic fundamentals of footy, and that is just pressure, pressure, pressure. So I don't think this will go to their heads at all. I think they'll handle this very, very well. But embrace it, enjoy it. You don't have, there's a lot yeah. of downs in footy, and this club's been through a lot of downs. So when you have an up like this into a preliminary final, soak it up. You could understand their want, Lingy, to clam up a little bit, couldn't you, and protect there's no point because you're not going to be able to get away from it. Yeah. The feeling is going to be unbelievable for the next two weeks for Richmond supporters, the Richmond team. So instead of trying to run away from it, I'm with Duck. Embrace it, enjoy it, and let it motivate you. Almost get caught up in it and enjoy it. Imagine if you owned a pub in Richmond and you were just going to ching <laughs> Well, you used to, Richie. Richie? <laughs> no, I never did. I wish you I... own Richmond. You are the owner of Richmond, the suburb. Don't be silly, Brian. It's a Minangola to Dangerfield. Martin. Little give. Asprey. Now Tui. He goes back to Motlock. Wrapped up. Great tackle by Edwards. Well, Matthew, you're probably the best guy to ask. I mean, 
Damien Harwick's personality is so up front, isn't it? So he's not going to hide away. But what do you think should happen over the next week or two? No, I think you saw last year with the Western Bull. You're not going to be able to hide from it because the supporters are pretty hungry, as you can see by the rollout tonight. So I think you've got to embrace it. And I think they're mature enough to be able to know what they've got to do to win games. But you might as well embrace the atmosphere that these uh, Richmond people are going to provide. Yep, it's... Like no other. We haven't seen this for a while. Feed off the energy. Yep. And doesn't it bad to feed in finals? We saw one last night in Adelaide, and we're seeing one now here. Doesn't that open up a whole can of worms for a footy club? Geelong played so strongly ready for three quarters. This highlights the last quarter. This is distance covered in attack when you've got possession of the football, your team. Look at the difference in the Ks there. 28 Ks, Richmond, 11, all the players combined. That's when Richmond rate. have got the footy, huge work rate. They've controlled the ball. That's why this last quarter has been dominated by the Tigers. Damien Hardwick there as well. The first time ever he's entered a match where he's had more wins than losses as the Richmond coach. 89 wins, 88 losses. So a little kick around the corner from Harry Taylor and he gets a late one for the Cats. So their only goal coming 21 minutes into this final quarter, only goal of the quarter that is, to Harry Taylor and that's his first of the day after what we saw in Geelong a few weeks back with him and Rance. It's been a reversal of actions in this game for him. So just mentioning that Hardwick, this is the first time he's come into a game where he's won more than he's lost as the Richmond coach. So some of the numbers there. So a Taylor goal gets it under 40 points, but it's a little shallow, isn't it? Selwood so to Mackey, and then Mackey off a step. Hurley getting back. Clever. Caddy's been superb against the old team. Lou over the give to Butler. Running hard, he can do that. Kicks to a one-on-one. -on -one. Well done, Henderson. He's outnumbered now. They swarm around him. Castagna, Guthrie, and also Mackie getting down. That bit, the numbers we just showed there, the big one for me, comes back to contested possessions. Richmond, plus 17 in the contested possessions in this game. In that game, not that many weeks ago, at Caninia Park, Geelong won it by 20. A swing of 37. It's one thing to say you want to do that and be better in the contest. To go out and deliver it on the MCG in a big final by the Tigers, that is so impressive. The other thing Richmond have been able to do today is to break that stranglehold that Geelong have had over them, winning the last 13 games, the Cats, over the Tigers. So just these little things chipping away, and here's Prestia, as Bruce mentioned, has been one of the Tigers' best tonight. floston has been fantastic as well. There have been many good players. Martin in the big moments. As Guthrie's brother straining his calf, we think, earlier in this game and we heard Dr Rowan White say that could be a three to four week injury if it's a full strain so 23 minutes ticked over we've got just over five remaining here Smith and Rewalt going at it Rewalt trying to nudge him under the footy Motlop picked it up, got it back inside. Menangola couldn't trap it. Hawkins confronted by Grimes. Floston around the corner, high footy, deep. Over the top was Rewalt with one oh. hand. What a pick up from Conchin. Left oh. foot snap. The goal of the game. Trent Conchin, look at him get around him. What about that? Have you ever seen anything like it? He deserves that moment. Oh, no doubt he's about that. He's done all the hard yards. He's he deserves so that moment, doesn't yeah. he? He's been... Great call, cool, Boots. He's been brilliant. <laughs> Had the 19 disposals, kicked the goal now. And it hasn't been about the number of disposals, No, it, it? Never, it hasn't for the whole year for Cochin. He has gone about this year different to any other year that he's played. So, Doug, he's done all the hard yards, Cochin, and have a look at that official attendance, over 95,000, a record for any qualifying final. It's been the most remarkable evening. Dangerfield, again, Cochin, who just kicked the most fabulous goal. Martin trying to get out of it, he does, and then Hooley soccers the ball forward. It's all happening.
I'm at the right ground to be saying that, aren't I? As Edwards gets it out wide, and then Edwards goes inside, and Jack gets on the end of one. He deserves a goal here, Revolt. He's played well enough. Yeah, once again, Cochin winning that ball, winning a possession in the middle of the ground. Been one of the great captain's games. Been under some scrutiny about a couple of finals. He's coming here with a focus, Trent Cochin. This has been a great performance by him. And numbers can like, aren't he? He's had 19 touches. Dangerfield, 29 possessions for the Cats, but Cochin, far better game. Absolutely. And that's what we've always thought about Trent. It's not about getting those, you know, dinky possessions. He's got all the, he's done all the hard stuff tonight. He's kicked a goal in every game he's played so far this season, and he's kept that record going. Well, a contest has become a celebration. And that's just another great example of this team. You've got Rewalt, who's just kicked the goal. If you thought years ago, if Rewalt, Rewalt didn't kick four or five, they were in trouble, the Tigers. They don't need him to kick goals anymore. They don't rely on him whatsoever. Duck, maybe we're seeing the evolution of the new forward line. Just one tall. Lots of small blokes being able to put pressure on, being able to kick goals. Been saying they've needed a second tall. Maybe they don't. No, <laughs> it's new and it's working. Isn't it? You can do it many, many different ways. And prelim finals, we're going to have the Tigers into one. We know Adelaide are into one. And Adelaide will probably be, I think it was announced by the AFL today, in fact, because they're the highest finisher, will be on the Friday night in Adelaide. And the Tigers look likely and look set for the Saturday night here in Melbourne. Probably a twilight, you'd think. Yeah, in the prelim week, that is. So here is Mackie and... We're going to have all of those details after this game for you tonight and exactly what is happening next week as well. So the Tigers with 3.20 left on the clock here. They will be absolutely delighted of Rioli spinning at the same time he tried to mark it. Tui, you started the game so well today, Zach Tui. The tackle dispossessing on Rewalt it was. Grimes might have got sold a little high. They made him stand up in the tackle. Now Martin somehow bullets his way out. Got it to Cotchen. What a win this has been as Tui and Edwards scrap it out behind the play. Motlop held up by Caddy. Bull not going anywhere. And a stoppage. Well, I left Adelaide over last night thinking I'd seen the flag favourites. I'm not sure if they are the flag favourites. It's been impressive, hasn't it? It's been equally impressive, probably even at, more near. At this ground, Bruce, yeah. yeah exactly. I mean, well, they're not going to have to play Adelaide if they make it until they get here. Yep. So Motlop's kick around the corner. Vlosta cuts it off and takes the mark. They are finishing full of running, aren't they? Hold Mitch. Put it on. Play on. Good kick. Wide. Motlop coming. Prestia. Waiting, 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 delivering, delivering to land it. And Geelong will be torn apart. They have completely torn apart. I've loved the game of Down Prestia too. I know we've sung a few of those Tigers players' praises, but Down Prestia, four-quarter effort at times playing on the cat skipper Joel Selwood, giving him a bit of a dirty night. He's had kept him to 19 touches. Prestia's had 31 disposals, kicked a goal, and just setting up another one now. Another shot for Lambert. Been a brilliant game by Prestia. Not going to come back. Not going to make okay. the distance. And Smith takes back the mark. Back with me, Jason. Back with me, Jason. Just almost a lull. Crowd Damn, drawing there. their breath. Getting ready for the final siren, I reckon, Bruce, where they can let it all hang out. Hold. And Hold. won't the streets of Richmond erupt? What did you see there, Lingy? Just the three players, Martin, Rance and Koch, and all just sitting on the bench. Well, you wonder whether they'll get any more action. Probably unlikely, I would have no. thought, given the quality of those. And when you speak quality, there's a quality that is building and happening in front of our eyes in Rioli. And now Allison, he centres the ball. Butler couldn't get there in the end. Castagno thought he might have caught one high. It'll kick around the corner and Mackie marks defensively. Okay. Well. Plays it on. 
to be forced to go long and down the centre. Great mark taken by Caddy. He's played so well. I mean, so many have played so well. He spreads it to Grimes. Holds on. Straight across. Well. So Grimes back to Broad. So in the dying minute, eh? Incredible night here. A record crowd for a qualifying final. Dangerfield to cut it off. And again under pressure. We've talked about that tonight. The pressure they've put him under. They've tackled well. They have tackled so well. But even stuck the tackles. So how many times do we normally see Dangerfield break a tackle like that and then be able to run 10 or 15 metres with the ball? They've just nailed him every time. Oh, it's been superb by the Tigers. So this last quarter, seven goals to one. Jacob. Thank you. Jacob and Zach. What a night. First preliminary final in 16 long years, and they have done it. They've won. The Tigers are into the prelim.